Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for this Wednesday, uh, the 19th of uh, August. Uh, I do hope that you are well uh, and that you are staying safe um, in this strange time. Today we will be using uh, Psalm 77 and we will be um, reading from Acts chapter 4 verses 13 to 31. Um, it's going to be a pretty wet day today, I think, isn't it? So I do hope that whatever it is that you're doing, you'll be able to stay dry. Let's take a moment just to still ourselves and to bring ourselves into the presence uh, of God, ready to listen to him, to talk to him and to hear his reply. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so we turn to Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan, I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close, I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night, my spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off forever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone forever? Has his promise come to an end for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters. But your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. God, our shepherd, you led us and saved us in times of old. 
Do not forget your people in their troubles, but raise up your power to sustain the poor and helpless. For the honour of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we continue in reading Acts uh, chapter 4, verses 13 to 31. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realised that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognised them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in his name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit to our ancestor David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stands and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and spoke the word of God with boldness. The apostles there trusted, trusted fully in God that preaching truth to power, as, as is a phrase that we hear today, um, was the right thing to do, that, that God's commandments, God's instructions, Jesus' example and the power of the Holy Spirit were the things to, um, to bolster them to give them the authority to preach and to speak God's word. It's difficult, um, as we prayed yesterday, to imagine what it must be like in countries where uh, Christianity is oppressed, where people are fearful of their lives um, simply because they believe in God, in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We are blessed. Um, I'm blessed to be able to sit here uh, and pray openly over the internet with you 
um, not having to hide who I am or where I am. Uh, it is an absolute blessing uh, and we should be grateful for it every single day. The Gospel Canticle is the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. And so we come to our time of prayer. Uh, as has become my custom for a Wednesday, um, is just to leave some time of, of silence for each of us to bring our own thoughts to mind, to sit, to meditate, to simply be uh, in God's presence, to listen to what is brought to our minds um, and what our uh, response to that is. The Diocesan Prayer Diary this today asks us to pray for the Protestant Church of Central Germany and also for the churches in Oklahoma in the USA and Bunbury in Australia. And the USPG Diary asks us to hold the creative, pray for more creative global solutions to, challenge, to face the challenges um, that refugees have to cope with. So just a few moments and um, of quiet. That may be helpful. So let us pray.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, for joining me uh, again this morning. Uh, I do hope that you have a safe day, that you are able to stay dry uh, and I will see you again tomorrow morning, hopefully without any more techno technical issues. Uh, I do apologise to those who were on Facebook Live um, for the abrupt change. My computer has decided that it needed to restart today. Uh, so I may just <coughs> decide to use the iPad and forget about the computer. So uh, have a good day. Uh, stay safe and God bless. <laughs>